You ever get one of those uh, inspirational, you need to go here because it's fucking awesome pictures and posts on Facebook? And then you're like, I need to go there and shit. Yeah, so did I. So I went to the Wild Center and shit. I didn't shit at the Wild Center. I should have shit at the Wild Center. Maybe I still can. The finale of my Adirondack adventure ends at the Wild Center and shit. I, uh, you know, I, I really, what sold me on coming here was the pictures I saw on Facebook of uh, the Wild Walk, which has like these treetop, you know, bridges and platforms and, you know, it, it looked a lot bigger from the pictures. It looked more impressive. Um, you know, it, it was, it, if I'd have just driven three hours and come here, I'd be a little pissed, um, because it was a bit of a letdown. Now, I'm, I'm not taking a complete shit on it. Um, for certain people, they will enjoy this. Um, think of your local children's museum. Uh, with, you know, little things for educational, outdoorsy type stuff. If that's what you're looking for, um, and you are, don't mind being around shit tons of little kids screaming, making noises, running around, climbing on shit, you know, people letting their kids run around wild, you know, if that is the kind of place you're looking for, and three hours of driving is worth it. You know, obviously, if you live in Albany, it's maybe an hour and a half. Um, but then I would say it's worth the adventure, you know. It's definitely a family-oriented tourist trap um, that does offer a decent amount of entertainment it would cost $22 and that gets you access to the park for two days so there's plenty you can get plenty out of it for your money but I there's not enough here to spend two days doing they do have tours where that are educational they uh, you know show off a bird of prey uh, I guess they're gonna have a porcupine that they're gonna show off later which I'm not sticking around for um, you know I can go to a zoo and see a lot of these things, you know, or hopefully see them out in nature. I would prefer to search nat nature than to have, you know, some captive animal to entertain me. But, you know, it is what it is. If they're going to keep zoos, I'm going to go visit them, you know, which that'll piss the vegans off because enslaving animals and shit. But, you know, I walked through the, the, the upper walk and I did enjoy the bird's nest view, but after spending my time hiking mountains, hiking trails that, you know, lead to gorges and, and, and spending a significant portion of my time in the Adirondacks in various places 
that are real nature and some places really remote as in you're lucky if you run into two hikers the whole day um, it's it's definitely a a change of pace from that now did I was I miserable coming no I did get some some moments of joy I would have to say the view when you go down to the river there's a river walk trail which is quite nice and, and you get to go down there and the trails are kind of naturey, but definitely well groomed and there's still a lot of kids running around so you're not going to find peace and serenity in the in the trails you know i was kind of hoping but um you know i don't mind being around kids doing their thing but there's times where i just kind of want to be one with nature and, and hang out with nature and not people um which is kind of one of the reasons i did this trip you know by myself and shit and uh you know when you get out to this marsh or this river um which had kind of some marshes mixed in with it and it was impressive i definitely liked the view there and it was actually a quiet moment there you know i got there at a time in between people um you know, and I, I, it, I know it might make me seem like an asshole, but there's something to be said at being alone in nature and being, you know, free of distractions. Uh, I think that is the biggest benefit I got out of this trip is being in several situations which were relatively free of distraction, where I could just do my thing and, you know, push myself in in ways that I've never done before like doing a fasted mountain hike was probably very eye-opening into my capabilities in that I even was able to pull it off without you know passing out or something um, and it worked and it just goes to show that we are meant to be able to fast and do physical activity. You know, I imagine that hunter-gatherers had to survive that way. Um, maybe not climbing a mountain, but, you know, surviving in nature generally is a contest of calories where you might burn more energy than you actually get out of any endeavor. But overall, you know, I liked the the bird's nest on the the overhead walk i liked the little tree thingy even though it was filled with kids i mean that the the wild the wild walk the elevated treetop shit is a magnet for every kid in the park like every buddy that brings their kids here seems to congregate there and in the museum inside now the museum inside was definitely i liked it it was mostly fish you know a few other turtles and you know it, it was okay not any more impressive than my local zoo to be honest um but it's a nice place to get away and i walked through the entire fucking thing before i bought a ticket which was my my bad i did eventually buy the ticket um which is you're supposed to have a little sticker on you this one right here that lets you go through the whole place w without getting molested so you you go you know they had plenty of fish they had this whatever the fuck this animal is that's that's bouncing up and down in the water and diving in and out and, and circling around and you know, I tried to watch it, but I was a little distracted by the kids with their face up against the glass and that kind of shit. Um, so it's, you know, you get that at zoos too, so it's it's not a thing. But, you know, overall, I guess I was just averse to the touristy thing right now. I'm just not in a place mentally to enjoy a tourist trap. Um, I understand that there are people that enjoy that, 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 that families like to go and spend all kinds of money doing various consumption-oriented activities. And that's kind of not what this trip was about for me. So it's kind of, I guess it was a little bit of a, what was supposed to be the finale of the trip. Because I really was looking forward to the wild walk. Um, turned out to not even be the best attraction in the park. The best attraction in this park that makes it worth 
you know, it, it, I would I would like to say it makes it worth it, but it was so small and short that I think they should they could have done a lot more along this lines and made it fucking epic. But there's a part called I Forest, and what they did is they put a bunch of speakers in the woods, um, and I don't know how they figured the sounding out, but each speaker seems to be playing a different voice in the choir type thing, and it's like you're walking through a massive, gigantic choir, um, singing peaceful, foresty fucking music. You know, and you're walking through there, and it's just that is probably the most serene experience I've had in the woods. Note to self get some earbuds and have that soundtrack playing whenever I'm hiking. <laughs> and shit. Um, so I would say I liked that more than the elevated treetop, you know, platforms. Um, which looked intriguing in the photography I saw, but generally people are staring at me. Oh, he's got a camera pointed at him. Well, he must be fucking weird. You know, I walking through there was was definitely I don't know peaceful, so I didn't enjoy that. You know, and surprisingly, there weren't a lot of kids congregating in that area. They might have found it boring. I don't know, or spooky. In some cases, the music was was a little bit. Uh, eerie um you know i i, I actually want to get the soundtrack to that walk just so i can put that in some earbuds when i'm walking through the woods and kind of have a similar experience in a real nature hike um as far as the trails of this place other than the river honestly i, I wasn't impressed um, one of my favorite places to go locally in, in the Syracuse area is the Beaver Lake Nature Center, um, which I get in for free as a veteran. And compared to that, no, the, the trails there are way better in my opinion and, and more, you know, wild. They're not as cultivated. I felt like everything here was sculpted in some way. Couldn't put my finger on it exactly, but it was definitely heavily humanly influenced and less nature influence. So, overall, I give this destination three stars. If you're in the area, then it might be worth a stop, but it is not worth an entire like trip just to do this. Um, it's a nice little accent like stop off type place on your way to some of the greater attractions the Adirondacks has to offer and I've discovered that there is a lot the Adirondacks has to offer I mean you got kayak tours you got boat rides you got plane rides on you know with the boats and plane boat thing whatever the fuck they call those motherfuckers that launch off the water and land on the water you can get those tours um, you can rent a boat go out on one of these lakes um, there's that campsite I stayed at that was $20 with a nice natural beach with no rocks or shit and the water was great and you know other although it was a little noisy touristy there um, for 20 bucks you can't can't beat the camping it was the full camping experience you had the campfire you had the tents you know it was really nice and quiet at night um, very atmospheric if you like see I don't mind the people in that context because you kind of you know you get the little bit of background noise of people enjoying the outdoors and it's not obnoxious no there was no loud music blaring somebody played a fiddle at one point during that part so overall the the trip from a you know visiting nature perspective and kind of getting away from technology i still had plenty of internet access i still got on social media which i wasn't really i was hoping i wouldn't be able to do um but you know me i'm i'm out there so i i posted on social media i talked to some people and some friends back home and um uh, you know did what i normally would do i also kept in touch with the channel uh i didn't get a lot of editing done in fact i've got two videos worth of footage just to put on there so 
As far as breaking my fast, I broke it at day six. After the hike yesterday, I was feeling a little run down. Um, I felt that I had done enough and that my body was kind of letting me know it's time to eat, motherfucker. So I went to a restaurant creatively named Steakhouse. That's the name. There's no other, nothing else to that. It's just fucking steakhouse. The service in there was atrocious. The food portions were small. I paid $30 and I had a steak. Probably I would say six to seven ounces of steak. A five ounce chicken breast with butter smothered all over it. It was real butter. I checked. Um, it came in the real butter packages um, and I used the shit out of those. Uh, so I melted the butter over the steak. I melted the butter over the chicken. Um, the shrimp, I got three pieces of shrimp, which was disappointing. I was hoping, you know, six maybe in a, in a serving of shrimp. But no, all in the salad was like minuscule, small. So they were definitely skimping on the food. And it wasn't anywhere near the caloric intake that my appetite was demanding. So after I did that, I stopped off at a local fast track, thinking I was just going to get my coffee and some heavy cream going to, to make up some of the caloric difference. Um, and ended up noting that they had Halo Top ice cream. So I was like, you know what, that's my treat. Even though I'm surrounded by junk dessert places, the Old Forge is where this was at, and it has a bunch of touristy shit to do, and a bunch of, uh, you know, it had like ice cream stands, and you know, everything that you could think of to break a diet was there. And I'm like, I can stay on my diet and have a treat. Um, and so I had some Halo Top. Now, I, like I say, don't do Halo Top all the time. I try to limit it to maybe once a week as my treat. I also had some cheese curds before that. Um, so I had I got, got, had half a bag of cheese curds and the Halo Top ice cream, and then that was the end of my feast. I woke up today feeling fine, not sore in any way. I feel energetic, um, rejuvenated. So my body was definitely a little depleted from all the hiking mixed with fat fasting. Now overall, how did I come out on the fat fast to water fast ratio? Three of the 24 hour periods were pure water fast with black coffee. And three of the periods were fat fast with six to 800 calories um, of fat fasting, mainly in the form of heavy whipping cream. Um, some of which had carrageenan, which I don't like. Um, but when you are got little options, a little carrageenan probably isn't going to kill you. Um, other than that, I had a couple of, like a handful of almonds at one point And uh, some uh, bacon jerky was another thing I did, which... Coupled with the level of fat that I was taking in from the heavy cream, met the ratios of a fat fast um, just fine, which is three to one fat um, is the minimum, four to one being optimal for a fat fast. That's, that's ratio of fat content to protein plus carbs in terms of grams. So, and you want to keep it under 800 calories, um, 600 being optimal, 800 being the top end. And you will get most of the benefits of, as far as weight loss, portions of fasting. You won't get as much autophagy as you would on a water fast. So if true 100% healing is your deal, then uh, that's not the way to go. But... The lowest measurement I got, I didn't measure today because I just ate yesterday and I'm eating today. And tomorrow morning when I get up, I will see what it, what the weigh-in results are because I'll be home. And the belly measurement after a couple days of refeeding, which is a good indicator of if I made progress or not. If I made progress, good. If not, if I gain it all back, if it all goes to shit, it is what it is. I will do the best I can. 
but ultimately I'd like to see if I came out on top how much I burned because I know I burned massive amounts of calories carrying that heavy ass pack um, six miles one day eight miles the other uh, it, I definitely got a workout in a um, couple of really strenuous workouts I was sweating huffing, huffing and puffing heart rate was up when I was climbing um, and it, it was definitely a fasted workout both times. Um, I mean, you don't have the option of really stopping unless you're going to camp out. You have to keep pressing on um, just to get back, which is why I like hiking, is it kind of makes you commit to finishing a, that workout. And it is a workout. Um, anybody that says hiking is just walking is it doesn't know their ass from a hole in the wall. Uh, you know, yeah, if you go out there with a bottle of water and a dream, it's kind of like walking. You know, you're getting some elevation out of the deal. But if you go out there training like I was, and that's the only reason I was carrying that pack is I wanted to train myself to be able to carry that pack and do some of these advanced hikes because I want to go out and do overnights. And in order to make sure I'm capable of doing that, I have to be able to carry a decent amount of weight, especially since I carry as much um, gear. On the gear front, um, there are th pieces of photography gear that I brought that I'm probably going to leave behind next time. Um, the tr I, I didn't use the tripod, and I carried that motherfucker, and that's a big chunk of weight on my backpack. Um, both times. I think in the future I'm going to go with a miniature tripod solution. There's plenty of places that are elevated boulders and logs and shit where I could set up um, a smaller system to hold a camera. And I think I need to roll with that option going forward. Um, and I also brought along my stabilizer which I found myself not wanting to use. I'm okay with this handheld vlogging style especially with the stabilization on this camera um, and I think next time I may opt to bring my smaller Sony camera instead of my Nikon because I really didn't get much out of it. I feel like I would have had a better job and carried a lot less weight if I brought my mirrorless with the 24 to 100, um, I believe it is, lens. Even though it's not a fast lens, um, I was using mainly during the day. I wasn't doing any low light stuff that would require a faster lens. But I have the option of bringing up my 150mm 1 1.8. So I definitely want to restructure the gear that I haul around in future trips um, to be a little more travel friendly. And see if I can still get the job done. I'll do some experiments with that when I'm back home um, at the Nature Center and, and whatnot. And see what I can come up with. Because um, the mirrorless, I, I think I would have everything I need to produce a similar image experience to as far as the you know high quality, highly detailed images I'm able to get with the Nikon. Um, but anyways... I got a few more stops to make on my way home. I have two unspent drone batteries and I'm gonna find a couple of pull-offs to fly on the way back to get some footage, to get you know a nice vista here or there. Um, I'm passing through the northern part of the Adirondacks to get home. And that is the end of this trip and travel series. So I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you, you know, you like these videos. If you want me to do more of this shit, let me know. But first, before we go, here's some spectacular drone footage and shit that I'm shooting today that you didn't see in yesterday's video because I shot drone footage when I got to the top of Black Bear Mountain too.
If you like this fucking video and you found it entertaining or enlightening in any way, please head over to scottthetruckdriver.com and leave a tip in the virtual motherfucking tip jar. And I will continue to make more videos. You can also hit the like, subscribe, and the motherfucking bell. And when you hit the motherfucking bell, choose the option to see whenever I post my videos if you want to be informed whenever I put up new shit. Um, I generally space my videos a couple days apart because they're generally long, and I give you guys time to watch them so I don't ask too much of your time. Um, as far as what am I doing after this, uh, after I get through the monumental amount of editing I now have to do, I will start returning to some of the topics. Um, while on this trip, I did do some research. I was reading through um, The Gaps Diet, and you know, which is a book about autoimmune and um, autism and how it's related to gut health. And I also was listening to the audiobook Wheat Belly, which I'll be listening to mainly on the way home. Um, not the original Wheat Belly, but the total health version. Um, and some very interesting thoughts on grain. Also, it was big news this week uh, with some sugar and soda taxes that went up, which I know some people are opposed to. Not me, because I don't, I don't eat that shit, and I don't think we should eat that shit in the amount that we do and I think it should be hard to get um, too many little kids are drinking that shit and I'm telling you what you know you raise the price of that shit people aren't gonna buy that shit for the kids um, let's make the healthy shit cheaper and make the unhealthy shit more expensive as in except for the way it is now where all the unhealthy shit is dirt cheap and all the healthy shit is expensive as fuck that's ass backwards you know, and if the government's going to do something right, it would be to reverse that by removing subsidies from all of those unhealthy foods and giving them to, you know, or even taxing and making more revenue off of those unhealthy foods and giving those subsidies to the healthy organic farms and shit. But remember, I'm not an expert. I'm just a fucking asshole. Have a nice motherfucking day and shit.